award-winning Spotlight East Windsor with Mayor Janice Miranoff. Notwithstanding uh, all of the challenges that uh, all of us share as uh, individuals, as businesses, uh, uh, in all of our activities, uh, we share those at the uh, local level as well. We're very proud to say that East Windsor remains relatively strong and certainly undaunted in spirit uh, in moving forward to uh, address and face those challenges uh, effectively uh, and in most cases successfully. Uh, we expect to take that same spirit into the coming year and we appreciate the opportunity to work with all of you uh, in, uh, 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 toward that direction. You know, I probably start every speech I give at reorganizations and at the state of the township uh, reiterating what uh, continue to be uh, the two uh, basic goals uh, that I strive for and the two uh, goals that are at the top of my table uh, as I start every year in East Windsor Township. And the people of the town have been very kind to honor me with uh, a pretty significant tenure at this point, and I, I thank them for that. One of the uh, areas that, of course, is uh, most challenging for everyone today is in financial uh, operations, uh, uh, and uh, it's no different for a uh, municipal government. Uh, our, um, our, our revenues have declined uh, significantly. Uh, state has uh, withheld uh, much of the money that we believe belongs to us. Uh, declining valuations and tax appeals all have taken a tremendous toll on municipalities uh, throughout the state, and certainly. Uh, Bill Dressel knows that uh, deeply, having to uh, deal with all of us uh, municipal governments uh, in the state of New Jersey, uh, but, but that's just a fact. And we have tried notwithstanding to face all of that by putting in place responsible spending plans and responsible operational plans with the support and assistance of our staff and our, uh, our uh, governing body and all of our other volunteers who support our operations and programs in the town. But let me just give you some facts about the 2012 municipal budget in East Windsor that underscore uh, the comments that I have just made. In 2012, spending in East Windsor has declined. And in fact, spending in our 2012 budget is over $1.4 million below the 2009 budget. Now that's good news. Uh, we have always worked hard to keep our operations very fiscally uh, tight uh, and to uh, recognize and take advantage of uh, funding opportunities and efficiencies whenever we can. But having uh, just listened to those numbers, taxes, property taxes have continued to go up. Property taxes in 2012 are up now. How does that make sense? Spending's way down, uh, but property taxes are up. So why is that? Some of that is uh, the uh, issue with the valuations and the tax appeals. But a significant part of that, I must say, is because the state of New Jersey, and we understand they have their own challenges, uh, but they have chosen uh, to take money, to divert money that belongs to us in East Windsor and other towns across the state for use in their own state budget. Now, that's not right. Uh, times are tough, and uh, we have our own challenges. That's money that we expected to receive and we depend upon. And just to further underscore graphically for you the consequences of those state actions of withholding our money, our energy tax receipts and other property tax relief funds, in 2012, using 2002 fiscal year as the base, uh, which is a statutory base, and just for the sole year 2012, not cumulative, uh, which I could go on about, uh, just for the one year. East Windsor has been shorted over $2.8 million that should be used for property taxpayers in our community. $2.8 million equates to $0.10 cents on our municipal tax rate. And for East Windsor, which has a very low tax rate, we have one of the lowest in the region. We're very proud of that. It is almost 25% of our 0 0.41 tax rate. So that 25% of the municipal component is being imposed because state officials, who I understand have their own needs, uh, but are taking money that belongs to towns and using it rather than giving it to us. So I think it's very important to recognize that. And it is in the interest of the business community as well as municipal officials. 
to stand up and address the critical problem of property taxes in the state of New Jersey because when I go around and when I address businesses, that's the number one issue that I hear about from businesses that want to stay in New Jersey, grow in New Jersey, and come to New Jersey. So it is a common goal that we all share and one that we should be working together on, and I would like to put that out there as a challenge. The other challenge, of course, is to our state officials, uh, our governor and our legislators, to return the monies that rightfully belong to the people in our community and to make this the year that they begin to do that. In that respect, I want to uh, thank the League, uh, which has uh, worked uh, with all of us so well toward that goal. And I also want to recognize Senator Paul Sarwo, the uh, chair of the Senate Budget Committee, has put forward a proposal to recognize the principle that I have just articulated and to begin a process whereby those monies are returned. And I would suggest that you all check out that bill and we all work together to get behind it because it's, uh, while it's not perfect, it's the appropriate and right direction for our state, for our businesses, and for our municipal governments in New Jersey. Now, the other thing I do want to point out, talking about finances, because you hear a lot about shared services, and we're all for shared services. Uh, I don't know very many municipal officials that are not for shared services. If shared services would save you money or, and or give you better services, and you know, I'm for that. And we have, in East Windsor, affected a number of arrangements, uh, both private contracts as well as shared service opportunities to uh, do things better, smarter, reduce expenses. And just for one moment, I obviously have to give you some of those so that uh, we don't leave with any misunderstanding. Sometimes we read things, and, uh, and they're nice buzzwords. Uh, and, and again, I'm for it. But you know, we should recognize the many things that municipalities such as East Windsor ha have already uh, uh, undertaken and, and done. Uh, we have, uh, just as examples, uh, first of all, uh, pr probably both shared services and other arrangements. East Windsor is in the state health benefits program. Uh, we uh, also have contracted with a private daytime emergency medical services uh, provider, which frankly has saved us about $300,000 from the time that we were using full-time employees. And actually the state health benefits has saved us over a million dollars annually uh, when uh, we uh, did go uh, into that. Um, I do have to just mention uh, as well that we're very blessed in East Windsor. Uh, we have a volunteer uh, fire company and rescue squad. I'm told we're actually one of only two municipalities in Mercer County that still has volunteer uh, fire uh, fighters. And God bless you because they not only do a great job, but man, they save us all a lot of money. Uh, so that's a terrific assist uh, for us also. We have shared service arrangements for health uh, officer, for other health uh, uh, services for the senior center, for transportation uh, services, for animal control, for daytime emergency medical services, for joint fueling facility. We're in a joint insurance fund. We're uh, uh, in another co-op aggregating energy costs. Uh, and I could go on and we are looking at additional opportunities. But understand, we support shared services. Uh, we support doing things together. It's smart. It does save a lot of money but it hasn't solved the issues that municipal governments are grappling with, and it's not resulting in the type of impacts on property taxes that all of us really need to see. So very uh, important, uh, and maybe a goal for our legislative committee in the chamber. I want to talk uh, about some of our new business, since that's probably one of the things that you're most interested in here uh, today. Um, you uh, had the opportunity uh, to uh, recognize our newest business in East Windsor. We're very pleased to, uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, been able to welcome Bartronics uh, to East Windsor. This is a global uh, uh, information technology company specializing in barcodes, smart tags, uh, uh, founded in India in 1990. And uh, we are uh, really thrilled that they've moved their corporate offices here to East Windsor to oversee their worldwide operations. And uh, we know that they're going to grow here, prosper, and love the community as much as uh, everyone else does. Uh, so congratulations, welcome. Uh, we're thrilled to have you here. I uh, want to also uh, talk about uh, some of the other things that we've seen in the last year and we expect to see in the coming year. Uh, our primary uh, uh, companies in terms of size and job generators, uh, we actually have a, a triple engine here in East Windsor. Uh, that we're pretty proud of. A lot of people don't realize that uh, East Windsor Township is the home of McGraw Hill Companies, of Conair Corporation, and of Shiseido America. 
uh, three of the preeminent worldwide companies. Uh, we're thrilled that they call here home, uh, that they've had, I think, a good existence here. Uh, and we uh, expect in the uh, coming year uh, to see some additional uh, uh, activity uh, in those uh, uh, companies. I do want to mention McGraw-Hill has just completed a solar uh, array uh, in their uh, campus on uh, Route 571. Uh, that is actually the largest solar, uh, net metered solar array in North America. Uh, and so that is another uh, milestone that we get to put on the map, and uh, we appreciate uh, their leadership in that area. I might also note, because I'm going to address this momentarily, that the uh, solar array was located in uh, a zone where it was permitted and to uh, support an existing business uh, here in the township. Uh, that's an important policy issue I think we all need to discuss as well. Shiseido America, uh, again, another excellent uh, company uh, uh, with environmental sensitivity, also has a solar array, more modest. On the, it's both uh, roof-based uh, and land-based uh, and uh, has been a great pioneer. We look forward to great things uh, from Shiseido in the coming year. Uh, and uh, Con Air Corporation, our uh, other uh, sort of... Uh, uh, trio uh, of, uh, of really great companies. All of our uh, businesses are terrific. Uh, they have an approval uh, for an expansion of about 450,000 square feet. Uh, they currently occupy about 675,000 square feet in East Windsor. Uh, they were the first foreign trade zone in Mercer County. Uh, uh, Bob Pernetti uh, and I both know that, worked together on that at the time. And uh, they have, uh, again, continued to prosper. And uh, we are hopeful that maybe this will be the year uh, that uh, we see that uh, project take off and uh, move forward. Some of the other uh, major uh, projects uh, that we have going on uh, in the township, uh, we have uh, Dave Traeger, who's been a developer of a tremendous uh, new project, he's gotten uh, all kinds of publicity, great uh, stories in the New York Times, which is the Site Park Technology and Science Center. Uh, it's a four building, 240,000 square foot. Uh, uh, science uh, campus, science technology campus, and we will be launching that this year uh, by occupying the first of the four buildings, 66,000 square feet, uh, with Elementus. So it's a very exciting uh, uh, step forward for the project for us, and we expect that to be the spark uh, for that project to really take off, and frankly, for that whole area of East Windsor, uh, which is around the old Trenton Road, Route 571 area. Uh, to uh, move forward. Uh, along uh, Route uh, 130, uh, we also have some very uh, positive news. That is a, a development project that uh, is moving forward as we speak on Route 130. It's just south of the Americana Diner, uh, which I think everyone in this room has probably eaten at at some point. Uh, the project is sponsored by them. Uh, it is a three-building, very attractive, modern, stunning-looking project, as you can see. And if you go over there, you'll see that some of the renovation work is already being done. Uh, the hotel that once occupied the space there has been removed uh, to uh, make room for uh, these newer, uh, more advanced buildings. And that is really uh, the center of our Route 130 retail center. So this is really a dynamic uh, uh, development for us and is really going to uh, enhance the attractiveness of that Route 130, 571 uh, area uh, as this goes forward. So very excited about that. Uh, First Choice Bank is here. They're doing some great upgrades. Uh, they came in our community about a year ago and uh, been a great, uh, great neighbor here, a great corporate citizen, and uh, upgrading uh, their existing facility. Uh, the, the project that I just made reference to, uh, Bottle King is going to be moving into the building uh, just south of there, which is a great development. They also paid us half a million dollars for the liquor license, so that wasn't a bad pocket change either. Charlie Brown Steakhouse has reopened uh, in the uh, East Windsor Village Shopping Center, which is great news for us. H&H &H Appliances, uh, uh, we're really the home to the family, uh, and uh, we were uh, thrilled to have them relocate uh, after 60 years in business to come back home and take a space on Route 130 uh, as well. Transportation is always an important area to us, and uh, we do uh, try to make some investments uh, every year in our roadway systems. This past year, uh, Twin Rivers Drive uh, from Jamestown down to Evanston completed a piece of that using a uh, state grant of $316,000 awarded to the town. Uh, we also did work on Hankins Road last year in a uh, cooperative uh, partnership with Robbinsville uh, to uh, resurface uh, that road. 
make necessary improvements, and we also did work on two other municipal roads, Elm Drive and Meadow Lane. This coming year, uh, with the help of a state grant again, we're going to be doing resurfacing work to Dutch Neck Road, uh, a portion of Dutch Neck Road, and we also have on our uh, plate for this coming year roadway improvements to Chestnut Drive, Glen Oak Drive, Primrose Lane, and Cedar Lane in uh, East Windsor. Uh, one of the uh, major projects that we've been championing for a long time, taking a lot longer than we would ever want, but we now have uh, given a bit of a green light to it, which is the realignment at 130 Hankins and Conover. I saw a couple of pauses in the back. It will be a uh, terrific safety uh, and traffic facilitation improvement for that part of East Windsor, uh, and certainly anything that improves safety and facilitation of uh, vehicles along 130 has got to be good for business as well as for our um, residents uh, uh, in the area. We also continue to move forward on the Landing Boulevard Extension Project, uh, which is another opportunity to create linkages. We're big on linkages. You know, you come into office and you inherit a situation where maybe you wouldn't have quite done it the way it was done, and now you want to try to figure out how to um, retool and make things uh, safer and more accessible. We did put a uh, road in a number of years ago that was a terrific addition. Uh, we call it, uh, what do we call it, Landing Boulevard Extension. I, I, we call them the same thing almost. Uh, this parallels 571. It goes behind the businesses and it connects uh, to 130. It, it's been a great assist uh, in allowing uh, residents and uh, patrons to get to businesses and to assisting businesses in that area. This would create another linkage between the Windsor Heights Shopping Center on the south side of 571 and the municipal facilities and the Target Center on the north side. Uh, again, align them up, signal control them so that people can, uh, again, be able to get back and forth uh, uh, in a uh, much safer and facilitated way. These are the kind of creative approaches that we have tried to take in East Windsor uh, to uh, help uh, make the community uh, a little more friendly uh, uh, user uh, uh, for everyone. We've um, got a couple grants that we're pretty excited about. Uh, one uh, grant project we're in the process of completing this was for the Route 33 Revitalization Redevelopment Project. The DVRPC was gracious enough to give the town a $100,000 planning grant. We undertook a collaborative project with the Borough of Heightstown. Uh, we were the lead, and we invited them to work with us. And uh, we have come up uh, with a model for Route 33 between 130 and Summit Street in Heightstown uh, that uh, we, we're very proud of. Uh, we had a presentation to the public uh, a couple months ago, had a great response. We're very excited. We're moving forward to finalize the report and put in place the ordinances and the regulations to make that a reality and uh, to make that corridor uh, something more than uh, it is right now. It's uh, fair to say it's a bit underutilized, uh, and even though it's a state road and a major connector, it could be doing a whole lot more than it does right now. DVRPC has given East Windsor a, another uh, planning grant of $100,000 to uh, explore the area around the turnpike with respect to enhancing circulation uh, and uh, business growth there. And we are looking forward this year to launching the efforts on that. And certainly, as we did with the prior grant, we want to involve as many of you as would like to be involved in that process. Um, the uh, turnpike uh, project uh, is going forward, if you have not noticed. And if you haven't, just drive through East Windsor, and you can't help but notice. Uh, it's uh, kind of disrupted uh, things in town a great deal for our residents, but you know they say progress uh, you know, always does uh, disrupt in the meanwhile. Uh, we think it's a great project, and uh, just to give you a little bit of an update, uh, one of the things that uh, was uh, part of the negotiations on this was uh, because they were taking a, a piece of municipal property in that area was to reconstruct our municipal building uh, and do some refinements there, and we're very pleased that work has been completed. Uh, and uh, we're able to work out of that, and that was a great, great plus uh, for East Windsor. Uh, we also received some funding toward open space uh, as a result of m mitigating uh, some of the takings. Uh, and the project itself right now, this is kind of an important update probably you're not aware of, the work uh, in relocating the interchange. Interchange 8, I don't care what the signs say, Interchange 8 is in East Windsor Township. It has always been in East Windsor Township. Uh, we are trying to get the signs updated. Um, that's part of our negotiations. Um, and you know they're not going to open that in our town without those signs reflecting that. <laughs> Trust me. The uh, 
the interchange is being relocated to the east side of the turnpike. Uh, it's being expanded to approximately 12 booths. Uh, and uh, it's also going to connect directly into Route 133, which once upon a time was supposed to be the idea, but for a whole history that I can't, and, and actually this is one that the uh, former county executive is familiar with as well, and we had meetings downtown on this road. Uh, reasons that I could never explain to you didn't happen at the time, uh, but uh, apparently sometimes government does catch up with itself. So it, it will connect directly into 133. The great news for this town is that all of the work Along, 130, uh, along 33, and all of the work associated with the relocation of the interchange will be completed by the end of this year. And a little secret, uh, I hate to even say it because I guess I'd prefer to have it uh, confirmed a little more than it has to me, although it's been uh, confirmed by the project coordinator, is that is they are intending to open that. Uh, obviously, the expansion will not be completed of the turnpike, the widening. But my understanding is that they do intend to open the new interchange, uh, which will provide very significant relief uh, to residents in that area and also means that whole area will be cleaned up and it won't look like we all live in the middle of a construction site or somebody said to me in the middle of blocks. So I, I don't want to go there. And maybe many of you may call that home. So, uh, But in any event, uh, it, it'll, be, uh, it'll be very good. Um, we're moving ahead on our trees. Remember the trees? Okay, we had to fight for those trees, uh, which was unfortunate. Uh, but we have uh, completed the first phase of uh, reforestation and uh, funding, and we're now on the second. Uh, we uh, have received the bids, and we will be starting some work this spring, and then we'll be continuing it uh, in uh, the fall. So um, uh, that's a good thing that is coming out of this as well. And uh, while I talk about uh, trees, I want to just mention, uh, I indicated that open space, uh, of course, is one of our top priorities. We were pleased this past year to receive another $350,000 in grants. Uh, we also were pleased to close on two additional properties, uh, approximately 40-acre property on Etra Road and a 7.5-acre property on Airport Road. And we are uh, days or weeks away from uh, finalizing uh, the acceptance of another open space property of about 38 acres on Wyckoff's Mill Road. So all great additions uh, to our inventory. No local tax dollars involved in any of these transactions. We're always proud to say that. Uh, and uh, we work very hard to uh, get donations, to uh, bring in uh, state and county grants. And I want to thank our county executive uh, and our freeholder board uh, who have been so supportive on our open space efforts and really an indispensable partner uh, in being able to uh, move forward on these. A uh, minute or two about sustainability, and I'm uh, almost going to wrap up. Um, let me talk about recreation first, our playing fields. Uh, uh, we received $1.2 million in state and county money, and again, uh, the uh, county executive was instrumental in uh, obtaining that funding. Uh, we've had some issues with the seeding of the fields and, uh, and some issues with the stormwater basin. You don't want to hear those stories here, trust me. But if you ever find the DEP in a private room, I have a few words uh, <laughs> for them. Uh, we had a good design to begin with, and uh, it have worked, and of course they knew better, uh, and now we're having trouble getting the water out of the basin. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we do uh, uh, expect that this year uh, we will uh, hopefully be able to wrap up all aspects of that. Uh, it, we have uh, built uh, four multi-purpose playing fields uh, for the town, and we have room for expansion there, a very exciting project. We also completed another pathway this year, uh, grant uh, uh, funded pathway, uh, the Dispro Hill Trail, and we have applications uh, pending for a few more. That's been a big part of our administration. Uh, we have uh, a whole network of new pathways that we have been able to uh, successfully uh, fund and put in place, uh, and our uh, residents love them, so uh, that's a great uh, feeling. Sustainability. Um, I want to kind of end on this because we've been very active in East Windsor. You've heard some of our great business accomplishments in that area. Uh, the town has been looking at a uh, solar array to power our police and court building. And uh, we were uh, very uh, proud to receive our Jersey, uh, uh, Sustainable Jersey Bronze certification uh, this year uh, uh, and uh, to uh, have the level of achievement uh, to be able to be recognized for that. We've updated our township community forestry management plan. You've heard about all our plantings. Uh, we have a million environmental and sustainability projects that we undertake every day in this town from our 
uh, clean up uh, our recycling days with the shredders to all of the contests and events that we have for young people to adopt the spot, to clean up days, to stream uh, clean up days. Uh, uh, we have an arboretum. Uh, we have a memorial uh, tree grove on our municipal building. Uh, uh, and and uh, U.S. Uh, Tree City, USA, 12th year, uh, uh, and I could go on. Uh, and we're very pl proud of that. Uh, we hope uh, and think we've been a leader in that area uh, for the region. Um, but having said that, I, I need to uh, throw out uh, another area that has been really of concern to us. Um, you know, we work really hard at the state level. We try to do good planning. We try to bring good things to our community. We try to do things in a conservative, fiscally conservative manner and to really use every money uh, as if uh, every, every penny as if it was our own. Uh, I think we've had a great uh, record in that respect as a team here in East Windsor. But, you know, so many times state officials step in and uh, just, you know, sometimes it's uh, well-intended and unintended consequences. Sometimes they think they know better. I already talked about our, uh, our, our property tax relief money. Another area that really of great concern to many of us in local office. And, you know, you know my record environmentally and uh, on sustainability. Uh, I, I would stand uh, with anyone on this. Uh, but the state of New Jersey quickly needs to step up and put in place a balanced, a thoughtful, and it's a properly incentivized program for renewable energy in this state that does not tell people that the best way to forward renewable energy and solar projects is to take our treasured farmland out of production and put panels over it. I'm sorry. A solar farm is not a farm. And in accordance with the governor's master plan on this issue, on this issue, we should not be using our public money to subsidize these endeavors. We should not be using public money to encourage people to take productive farmland that we value in this state, the Garden State, and that we have invested so much of our money to preserve. We should not be using public subsidies to put solar panels on that farmland. The panels should be going where they belong, on the rooftops of our shopping centers, our warehouses, our brownfields, or they should be going into net metered projects where we get a dual benefit to support and encourage our great businesses to be able to operate more efficiently, to stay here in our communities and in our state, to keep jobs here and to generate new jobs. So that's an area that you can be helpful because it makes sense to everyone the market's crashed because it's become a free-for-all for everybody. Uh, and whoever can get in the ground first, wherever you can cash out uh, your project, gets to move forward. Shouldn't be that way. We can have both goals. One goal should not be at the expense of the other. As you can tell, I feel strongly about that. Uh, I hope you will, too, because I think it's something that uh, we need to work together on. And frankly, there's not very many people that don't agree with what I said. So the question is, why isn't Trenton doing something about it? And sometimes that's the puzzling question, and one that requires that we get involved and we make sure that they start to do something about some of these common sense, good government, good policy, good business goals that hopefully we all share. So on that, I want to thank you for this opportunity uh, for uh, addressing you, sharing thoughts, sharing goals, sharing uh, accomplishments. Uh, we love our business community. Uh, we uh, want to continue to work with you. We value you. We want your input. At the end of the day, we think we share goals. We think most of the goals that are ours are yours and that we should be moving in the same direction. And I thank the Mercer Chamber for giving us this opportunity to come together uh, and to, uh, uh, to uh, share both achievements and goals and we uh, welcome you, we encourage you in the coming year to continue to be our partners, to continue to help us do best for our, our communities, and so we can do the best for you and allow you to prosper and go. And our great community of East Windsor, our great county of Mercer, and our great state of New Jersey. Thank you.